So I thought his performance was largely positive. Um, I thought that there were uh, some really uh, good moments in terms of him trying to kind of force the issue in and around the Nottingham Forest penalty box. I thought particularly in the first half, there was one situation where he kind of drifted um, from that kind of inside left position towards uh, the centre of Nottingham Forest penalty area around about where the D was and a loose ball broke and he managed to kind of get himself ahead of the defenders, get onto it and he tried to bend one, didn't he, into the top right corner. Couldn't quite execute it in the way that I'm sure he kind of dreamed of, but or, or saw it in his mind as he approached the ball. But it was a really, really good effort nonetheless. There was another moment in the first half where um, we had managed to work the ball into the penalty area. I think Jesus was involved. I think Martinelli was involved. And the ball kind of broke inside the box. And Emil Smith-Rowe was the quickest and sharpest to react. And he just got a toe to the ball to kind of tee it up for Bukayo Saka, whose effort then took a deflection. Uh, but certainly looked like it was bound for the bottom corner. So Emil Smith-Rowe, to me, um, looked like he was not always on the ball, maybe as much as I'd like in the first half in terms of, you know, some people would disagree with this. I like Emil Smith-Rowe to be involved in the build-up. I, I like him to be that guy. But I also think that that's Martin Odegaard's job as well. And maybe the idea of of playing Odegaard along with another kind of similar-minded left eight in terms of the attacking um, sort of bias and, and the want to, to get forward more than to prioritise defending is maybe because he wants that left eight to be the one that takes the gamble in terms of their positioning, that makes that run into the box. You know, we, we see it with Kai Havertz. Um, you know, you think about the logic behind bringing Kai Havertz in to play that position, essentially. You you keep coming back to the fact that he's a more attack-minded player than Granit Xhaka was. And so if you want one of your midfielders to take a gamble and, and essentially become an additional forward at times, you want someone who's a little bit more forward-thinking and, and who's more capable of doing damage in the final third. Emil Smith-Rowe's role was that last night. Um, so whilst at half-time I was sitting there and I was going... Yeah, he's been okay. He's looked good in, in flashes and in moments. I'd quite like to see him get on the ball more. When I think back about the contributions that he made in the first half, it's clear to me that, no, his task was to be the one that drifts and ghosts into positions. And we saw him score plenty of goals before this period of injuries began to suggest that he can do that and he can impact the games in the final third. When the second half started, I thought he played the game slightly differently, but that's because the game state was different. As I mentioned a little bit earlier on in the podcast, there was more space. There was more room um, for him to travel into with the ball at his feet. I think in the first half, he spent a lot of time coming really wide um, with Gabriel Martinelli, trying to link up with him. And then at other times, he drifted in towards the edge of the penalty area, looking to make things happen there. I thought in the second half, because there was more space in between the lines, he was more inclined to kind of drop into a more traditional midfield position, get on the ball and try and make things happen that way. I think when he plays, you know, those little intricate exchanges with people, that's when Emil Smith rose at his best. I think we've seen over the years that when he gets the ball inside the box, he can um, uh, be, be, be used to devastating effect. We've all seen that before. So I think Emil Smith Rowe does have a future in that role, in that position. I, I do think that I think he's, Equally as effective. In fact, you know what? I say he's more effective than Kai Havertz in that role when you're looking at the attacking side only. I think Kai Havertz plays it differently. Obviously, they're, they're two different players. But I think Smith Rowe gives you that. Where I think Smith Rowe maybe falls down a little bit, and I think Mikel Arteta will take this into consideration in some of the, uh, quote, bigger games, is that I don't think defensively he's as... Um, he's as useful as Kai Havertz. And that's not because he doesn't try or he doesn't work hard. It's it's because of a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't think he's anywhere near his peak fitness level, which impacts your ability to get back and support and then get back into the forward positions that you need to be in. And to constantly do that is quite demanding and quite difficult. But also his physical stature isn't the same as Kai Havertz is. He isn't going to support you in defending set pieces. He isn't going to be able... To, to make that run and get up alongside Gabriel Jesus when we go that little bit more direct and be the one that wins the knockdown. It's not Emil Smith-Rowe's game. And again, can't add interest to Zinchenko, as we mentioned earlier, and I'm talking about height interest, nothing else to be clear. 
Um, and you can't do that with Emil Smith Rowe either. Um, so, yeah, I think there are some things uh, that make him really kind of well equipped to play that role. I think there are other things where maybe he falls down a little bit, but it's horses for courses, right? To have those different options for different games, I think is massive. I talk about him not being at his premium, premium fitness level. How can he be? You know, he's played so little football over such a long period of time that he's always going to be a bit rusty. And, you know, towards the end of his uh, of his display yesterday, I thought he uh, just faded a little bit, but not through any fault of his own, just because, as I say, you know, he, he didn't have more than 60 odd minutes in the tank, really. And we got to about 70, I think, when we took him off. So, look, there's lots more to come from Emil Smith-Rowe. The performance was good. There were lots of encouraging signs. I wouldn't go as far as saying it was outstanding. I've seen some people say that it was brilliant and it was wonderful. He's a beautiful footballer to watch. He's so elegant in the way he carries the ball. Um, you know, very easy on the eye in terms of the, the the style of the player. It's all great to see. I think the the most significant thing to take away from yesterday's game when it comes to Emil Smith-Rowe is not what he did in the game in terms of, you know, direct impact and, you know, you know, contributing to the to the victory in terms of, you know, those means, i.e. scoring a goal, creating an assist, all the rest of it. Um, I think it's the fact that Mikel Arteta had the trust in him, despite Kai Havertz being available. He's been a favourite of Arteta's really this season. I know he's left him out the side a few times, but he's been a regular selection. For Mikel Arteta to look at Emil Smith-Rowe and think, yep, you know, you've you've been um, working really, really hard in training. You're getting there. You're getting closer to the level that we want you to be in terms of your fitness. Ability, there's no question about. But I'm at the point now where I'll trust you again after, you know, everything you've been through. I think that's the big point here. I think that's the the key takeaway from last night when it comes to Emil Smith-Rowe. It's not that he was amazing because he wasn't amazing. He was good. It was a solid performance from Emil Smith-Rowe. And I thought, as I said, he ran out of gas towards the end, which is understandable. It's not criticism of him. But I think the big takeaway is that it's clear that Mikel Arteta does trust him, that he does have a place in this group, that he does have a future at Arsenal Football Club, should he want it. So for me, that's what I'm kind of looking at and, and taking away and, and, and banking as my top line when it comes to a Smith throw at Nottingham Forest last night. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments.